All right, folks, in this Sunday, August 11, 2024 update, I am going to give you guys a bold Ripple XRP prediction. Now, if you guys don't think it's bold, that's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just give it to you straight here in the first 60 seconds of this video, but I want to encourage you to watch the whole video through. It's going to be a straight XRP update, and I'm going to explain why I'm making this prediction. Now, very simply put, my prediction is that Ripple stablecoin will be the largest stablecoin by market cap, and it will also have the most amount of volume with the RLUSD ticker, Ripple's new stablecoin said to be launched here in Q3. I believe it's going to be the number one by market cap, and it's going to have the most amount of volume trading on it. And I'm going to explain why in this video. Let's get started. If you appreciate my updates and my content, make sure you guys have subscribed, hit that notification bell, and all of our community resources can be found at ZachRector.com. A huge shout out to this community. We actually just hit 80,000 subscribers. What a journey on our way to that 100,000. Uh, we are just getting started, and I couldn't do it without you guys. I appreciate you so much. Let's roll. So straight on into it, folks, take a look at this. This is part of XRP going viral. I've been talking about this. This is our moment. This is the chief legal officer of Coinbase, Paul Grewal, talking about the secondary sales of Bitcoin are not securities transactions. The secondary sales of Ethereum are not securities transactions. The secondary sales of XRP are not securities transactions. But everyone else, to our friends at the SEC, too bad because you've somehow got an ecosystem, right? This is the battle that we're still up against, even though we've had multiple courts turn down the SEC, reject this. Now, once again, Ethereum doesn't have this level of clarity. Paul Grewal is just throwing that in there and including that. He's also including Bitcoin, which the SEC will come out and say that they don't believe Bitcoin's a security, right? But you know, the rest of the space has been left in the dark, and this is one of the competitive advantages that Ripple's going to have with the clarity for XRP, and now they're working towards getting regulatory approval for their stablecoin. Part of XRP going viral, though, is Coindesk sharing the news of the Ripple, you know, final conclusion of the lawsuit for the 10th time. And this was posted last night, or, or yesterday, I should say, and I retweeted them, and I say, they are posting this for the 10th time because Ripple XRP news sells. Nobody actually gives a crap about 99% of these tokens. Ripple made XRP a world reserve digital currency while taking the SEC head on. Are you ready for the XRP documentary? XRP is going viral because this is the financial story of the century. You can no longer dismiss it. You can no longer discredit it. They're still trying to tell lies and misinformation about XRP and Ripple. Absolutely, but we've cut through it, and this is the moment where everybody starts to hop on the train with us. And I'm talking about the biggest names in the cryptocurrency space, uh, one of them including Scott Melker, taking his uh, opportunity to talk about Ripple's stablecoin, the wolf of all streets. This is a guy with nearly a million followers on Twitter, right? Very prominent in the Bitcoin community. And he's just sharing the Ripple news, right? Which we all know it's coming. And this was first announced in April of 2024. And now it's set to be launched here sometime in Q3. But the point that I'm showing you guys here is that Ripple and XRP are going viral. Nothing can stop it. We're about to have this documentary going. And once that goes live, you'll be able to send that to all your friends and family and say, hey, watch this six-part docu-series on the XRP Ripple story. It's the financial story of the century. And I have, you know, very simply stated, that that story and that documentary is going to resonate with people outside of XRP, outside of crypto, because it's about government corruption. And everybody loves a good juicy story of corruption. And, and the little guy, right, overcoming, right? David overcoming and defeating Goliath and putting Goliath back in his place. And Goliath was Gary Gensler in the SEC, obviously. We also have some whale movement that I wanted to mention. Despite price action being down, and XRP is back down to 56 cents this Sunday morning as I'm recording this update. So I think it's you know safe to say that XRP did a false breakout decoupling. Like we decoupled for a day. We were up 20%. Rest of the space was down. So we decoupled for about a 24-hour period. But now it appears we are back trading with the rest of the space. It is what it is. But, and this is key, the whales don't care about the noise. The, the whales aren't complaining. They're not firing up Twitter spaces to get mad at Ripple. 
what they're doing is they're scooping up huge sums of XRP, and we're seeing this on chain. According to Whale Alert, the aforementioned transfers moved 197.8 million XRP in total, which is equal to 114 million in fiat. The largest transaction was conducted between anonymous wallets, and it constituted 106 million XRP worth $61 million. That wasn't the only one. We also see this one earlier in the week. 60 million XRP transferred from the upbit exchange to an unknown wallet. This is, uh, you know, where we're seeing a lot of activity over in Korea, upbit and, and these uh, exchanges over there where XRP is one of the top traded assets on these exchanges over there. And uh, this was also ver verified here on the whale alert website right here. Three days, 45 minutes ago. Here's the transaction, 60 million XRP and the fee that they paid. 0.01 XRP. So despite all the noise, the whales are still accumulating and Ripple is getting ready to launch this stablecoin any day now. So let's get right on into it as to why I believe Ripple stablecoin is going to be the number one stablecoin by market cap and also by volume. One metric that I think will be tough for it to be is trading pairs. Tether has hundreds, I mean, maybe even thousands of trading pairs, and it's been issued on all sorts of different blockchains. So I do believe that Tether will still have the most amount of trading pairs, but I do believe that Ripple is going to surpass their stablecoins market cap and the amount of volume. So straight from Ripple, they announced it. It is live on the testnet. So they're working on it right now, issued on the XRP Ledger testnet, and they're getting it ready to go. Now, this is key. They say RLUSD will be valued one to one to the US dollars and 100% backed by US dollar deposits, short term US government treasuries, and other cash equivalents. These reserve assets will be audited by a third party accounting firm, and Ripple will publish monthly attestations. Now, this is exactly what Circle's doing. Uh, Tether's providing some, you know, audits, some reserves, and a little bit of that. But here's a key difference. And this is, I'm just going to get straight on into it. So Circle, obviously, they're over collateralized as well. They've been providing the monthly attestations and they show everyone their reserves. That's great. That's fine and dandy. And people trust Circle. There's a reason why Circle's grown in market cap here recently. But one key advantage that Ripple has is that they're not having to rely on another bank or some other counterparty to actually hold the collateral. Ripple is going to be able to hold the collateral themselves at Standard Custody, the company that they just acquired. One of many acquisitions that Ripple's been making during this bear market, right? And so Standard Custody and Trust will be able to hold the assets, the collateral that will back this stablecoin. Ripple will have no cost, no fees associated with that, right? It's already part of their business. The other thing that many people aren't considering is that by by extension, Ripple is backed by XRP, right? There's this this relationship confuses a lot of people, right? Does Ripple control XRP? Is XRP centralized? You know, no, it XRP ledger is not centralized. The ledger is completely decentralized. Ripple controls a large supply. And that's why I'm saying that Ripple is backed by XRP. Now, does it mean that Ripple is going to come out and make a formal announcement that their stablecoin is backed by XRP? No, they could. They could say, hey, you know, we're over collateralized, you know, one to one plus some with cash and UST bills. And we have it there. But we also are going to set aside a billion XRP so that we're over collateralized and backed by a portion of XRP. That could be done. That easily could be done. They could back it by other assets, too. They don't need to. But I'm saying by extension and, and by definition, Ripple has a balance sheet with plenty of cash. We know Stuart Adorati said they're going to pay the fine to the SEC with cash on their balance sheet, $125 million, not a big deal. But we also know that they have a lot of XRP on their balance sheet and a lot of XRP in the escrow. And so this is why I'm saying by extension, when you are you know using a stablecoin, you have to ask who's the counterparty. In the case of Circle, your counterparty Circle and your counterparty is the U.S. government because they are backing the stablecoin by treasuries issued by the U.S. government. In the case of Ripple, well, it's the same thing, but they also have a, a boatload of XRP. So I think that, you know, this very simply put makes Ripple the best counterparty for a stablecoin issuer, right? If, if you have anybody in the space to choose from, I'm going to choose Ripple. I know they got cash. I know they got XRP. Their business is very profitable. They're out of this SEC lawsuit. They're in the clear. 
Well, everybody else, you know, Circle, even though they've been in compliance, they're in good standing, they don't have the same competitive advantages. And I want to show you guys just how big this is going to get. So this is from Ripple's Insights blog. And they talk about how the stablecoin market is set to grow to 2.8 trillion by 2028. Now, we move on over here. This is the uh, other um, ripple.com slash solutions slash stablecoin. This is the new landing page for Ripple stablecoin. And so they're getting it ready to go. But what I wanted to show you this, deep liquidity. RLUSD provides deep liquidity for major trading pairs on select centralized exchanges. So it looks like they already have partnerships with centralized exchanges ready to issue this and bring and really just flip the switch on the liquidity when this thing does get started. Now, moving on over, I want to show you how profitable the stablecoin business is and how, how much money Tether's been making. In 2023, throughout the whole year, Ripple made, or sorry, Tether made $6.2 billion in profit, right? This is a record high for their market cap as well. So Tether has been killing it. This first half of 2024, they've made $5.2 billion in net profit. So they've literally made almost as much as they made all of 2023 just in the first half of this year. Tether is, is doing it, right? They're the largest stablecoin by far. But now, look at this. The market cap of stablecoins right now is only at about $160 billion. Now, Ripple just put out that report talking about how we're going to $2.8 trillion by 2028. That's only about three and a half years away, folks. In three and a half years, this thing's going to grow exponentially from $160 billion to $2.8, nearly $3 trillion. That's bigger than the entire cryptocurrency market cap right now. And so Ripple is launching this stablecoin at the perfect time. The other thing that we're seeing, and I have to mention, it is Tether is now getting sued by Celsius. And uh, basically for, they, they broke their agreement, right? They, they basically, uh, you know, they, they, they gave them Tethers for Bitcoin. And now Celsius is suing them over that. And this is going to be a problem because Tether, a large part of the manipulation that they were doing was with Bitcoin. And Tether, by and large, was the largest uh, trading pair for Bitcoin at some uh, points over the past few years. Nearly 60 or 70 percent of all trading volume for Bitcoin was done through Tether. And so why I don't think that the Ripple stablecoin is going to get issued on all these different blockchains and have all these different trading pairs. Um, you know, we're going to see substantial amount of trading pairs probably on the XRP ledger and on Ethereum, right? Because Ripple is issuing it on both XRP ledger and Ethereum. So we're going to see a lot of trading pairs, but, uh, you know, Tether has a far advantage as far as how many blockchains they're issued on and how many trading pairs they have. But where I think they get passed up is on the amount of volume and the amount of uh, market cap that Ripple is going to be able to bring into this stable coin. Now, when we go to Masari.com, I was looking up the average volume. I was trying to get a, a gauge on the volume of these assets. So in the past 24 hours, the real volume of Tether is 20.77 billion. But if you go back here and you look over the past few years, there's some days here where the real volume was over 600 billion. I mean, I mean, this is this is really incredible when you look at this. I mean, some days it was ha over half a trillion volume on Tether. This is just Tether alone. Now, this day right here in March of 2024, they say the real volume was 551 billion. This is the type of volume that's now going to be brought to the XRP ledger if Ripple can just accomplish what Tether has done, which what Tether has done, although it is substantial, although it's the lead, although it's respectable, it's just a drop in the bucket compared to where the space is going. Because remember, we're only at 160 billion. The market cap of stablecoins is going to 2.8 trillion just in the next few years. And when you look at the volume on XRP and Masari, just so you understand this metric of 24 real, uh, 24 hour real volume, it's pulling volume from all of the centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges tracked by Masari. So right now in the past 24 hours, the real volume on the XRP or for XRP is only 730 million. Right. And if you look at the peak volume on, on some of these days, right, you're only up at about 20 billion dollars worth of volume in, you know, the peak 
days this year. And then if you go back to 2021, there was some days where we achieved over 40, 50 billion dollars worth of volume for XRP. But if you go back and you look at what Tether's been doing, I mean, you're talking about half a trillion. It's literally a 10x. And so the reason why I'm comparing this is just to say that Tether is heading into uh, regulatory headwinds. They have to come into compliance with the stablecoin legislation. They're getting sued by Celsius. They have problems. Ripple's in the clear. Okay, This is going to give them an advantage. But I also mentioned the other ones where they can over collateralize. They, uh, they have no fees, no cost to actually hold that collateral. That's another advantage. And the thing is, this is going to be how they onboard their U.S. clients. And this is why I think that they're going to surpass Tether in volume and in market cap because the uh, the amount of institutions that want to come into the cryptocurrency space, that want to invest in this space, they need a way to on-ramp. We know that Ripple already has so many partnerships with all these institutions. And so what this Ripple stablecoin is going to provide is that easy on-ramp, that seamless experience where an institution can come into this space, right? And we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars coming into this space, trillions of dollars coming into the space just over the next few years. That's just getting started. And I think that Ripple is in a unique position with those existing partnerships. And finally, an ability to basically fire things up in the United States, which is why I say they're going to have the largest uh, stable coin by market cap is because I just think that Who's going to bring in the institutions? I mean, you can see Circle's bringing in some. You're seeing, you know, tokenized treasuries. They're bringing in hundreds of millions of dollars of tokenized assets. They, they're not even in the billions yet. But where you really get it is the stable coins and the flows, the liquidity. The liquidity that Ripple's going to be able to build within the United States. See, Ripple has been using XRP for their clients outside the U.S., for cross-border payments, for their on-demand liquidity product, and XRP has been the solution. But the solution for banks and institutions and payment providers in the United States for payment flows inside the borders of the United States, you don't need an XRP. You need a stablecoin. And this stablecoin is going to be issued on the XRP ledger. And I think that it's going to be able to tap into some of the best liquidity once Ripple adds this stablecoin to the AMM. We just covered it yesterday. Ripple stablecoin is clawback enabled, which is critical for institutions and regulatory compliance. But they're making an amendment on the XRP ledger right now so that you can add assets with the clawback enabled to the AMM. Right now, you can't add any assets with clawback to the AMM. Right? It kind of defeats the whole purpose of deep public open pools of liquidity, right? If you can claw it back. So what they're doing right now is they're making an amendment so that clawback enabled assets can be added to the AMM. And this is where I think that Ripple is going to be able to source some of the best liquidity is they can bootstrap it by putting in a bunch of their stablecoin and putting in a bunch of XRP. And this will be the largest AMM liquidity pool on the XRP ledger. And when you look at the metrics uh, on how much moves on these stable coins, just uh, what Tether's accomplished and what Circle's accomplished, it's not so much Ripple's going to steal Tether's lunch, although I think that Tether's in trouble. They got some lawsuits. They don't have clarity. I think that this space is set to expand and Ripple's in a unique competitive advantage with already a bunch of existing partners to be able to really start flipping these switches and onboarding clients to the tune of, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars very quickly right and so this is why i believe that ripple stablecoin will become the number one stablecoin by market cap and it will have the most amount of volume number one uh, uh number one stablecoin volume wise and it's gonna be very interesting to watch what this will do the impact to xrp as well remember this is issued on the xrp ledger and ethereum every transaction for the stablecoin on the xrp ledger is using xrp and burning xrp and locking up xrp with every wallet that gets created for the ripple stablecoin as well so this is bullish for xrp i'm incredibly bullish on ripple and when you go look at the profits think about this tether made six billion 6.2 billion profit in 2023 they've already made five billion profit in the first half of this year if Ripple just accomplishes what they've done there, right? This is five, six billion profit per year added to Ripple, a company that right now is only valued at seven billion dollars on Link to. Folks, a company that their uh, escrow is already worth twenty something billion, 
I'm telling you, there's a chance that they could have the largest IPO in history, and this is going to be massive as far as uh, Ripple and the valuation of the company Ripple. Uh, I'm very bullish if you guys haven't picked up on that, on not only Ripple, but XRP as well. I want to hear your guys' thoughts, though. Do you agree with me that Ripple stablecoin is going to be the number one stablecoin by market cap and by volume? You guys let me know in the comments down below. If you appreciate this update, please make sure to like this video. Help me out by sharing it out far and wide, and I will see you guys in the next one. God bless you all.